So I'm going to be putting a external fuel pressure gauge on the Phytech. Uh, I think I mentioned that I might do this in another video. Um, I ordered up everything that I needed. Uh, I already run sport comp gauges, so uh, I bought an electronic sport comp autometer gauge. Um, I kind of debated how I was going to plumb this. Uh, it does come with the sending unit. Uh, this particular one comes with the eighth inch NBT sending unit. Um, I kind of debated how I was going to tap it in there. Uh, I think the best thing to do is to get this Russell, at least in my installation, uh, this takeoff, what they call a takeoff fitting. And you can see, oh, it's a little bit hard to see with this in there. There it is. So there's a port for it. Um, I'm going to be installing this after my filter. You want to read your pressure as close to the throttle body as, as you can, because that's going to give you the most accurate reading of what your injectors are seeing. So I'll be putting this after my filter going into the unit. Um, I'm not quite sure yet how the um, sending unit is going to fit in there. So I kind of got a couple of different options. Uh, might have to put a 90 on it. Might just be able to put it straight in here. Um, so I know we'll play around with it. And then I got a gauge cup cause I trying to figure out exactly where I'm going to put this thing. Um, so that's kind of specific to my installation. It's not so important if you're putting one of these on your, uh, on your Phytech or whatever fuel injection system. But, uh, I mentioned this before the, the Phytech does not monitor fuel pressure. So, uh, I have a fuel pressure gauge under the hood. That's, that's real good. If you're standing there looking at it while it's idling, but you know, when you're driving, it's also good to know what it is. Uh, I haven't had any problems with fuel pressure. I haven't had any issues with fuel at all, but, um, in case it ever does start giving me problems, uh, you know, this is one of the very first things you want to look at diagnostic wise is my fuel pressure, right? Or not. Um, the FPRs do go bad. So, uh, I carry a spare one and this is, you know, this will give me a good, uh, this will give me a good indication of whether I've got something going on. It, it could be a bad FPR. It could be a bad pump. It could be a clogged filter. Um, I don't expect to see those things, but, um, I just want to have this so I can monitor it. So yeah, this is an electronic gauge and the fittings for it. So I'm going to go over the whole installation, um, uh, kind of step by step as I put this in. Um, cause I think folks are starting to get interested in doing this. I also mentioned before, get the electronic one. Don't do something stupid, like bringing a fuel line into your cab. Uh, that's just not a, that's just not a smart thing to do. So anyways, we'll, uh, we'll go through the installation of this. Back with installing a uh, fuel pressure gauge, electronic fuel pressure gauge uh, that I'm going to have in the cab of my truck on my Phytech. Uh, the first thing I'm looking at here is installing the uh, pressure transducer uh, on the throttle body. I originally was going to put it on the, the opposite side where the fuel uh, filter is the pressure filter is on that side it's a little tight back there though and I was kind of looking at this and I think I can kind of make this look sexy fitting it in here I think what I'll do is take the gauge and uh, release it from here or or uh, move it from here I got this takeoff that I was talking about earlier this is kind of mocked up by the way this is the pressure transducer and an elbow and some fittings that I got um, and this is that takeoff fitting I was talking about. Um, see, it's got an eighth inch NPT port right there. Um, so if I get this set up right, I am going to be able to get it right in there. And I'll just put the, the new gauge on here. I actually move the gauge out a little bit, which is probably fine. And then this is just going to point that direction. I'll make up a nice harness for the uh, plug that plugs into the back of this transducer. And feed that in uh, beyond the firewall into the cab where the gauge is going to be. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. The pressure transducer is actually a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it's not huge. I mean, you can see the scale in my hand. It's not gigantic. So I'm going to get this all uh, tightened up because I think this is going to work. So yeah, we'll 
take it off of there. You could do this any number of ways. You could use this straight fitting like I've got here and a, a female to female coupling. Um, you know, there's there's different ways to plumb this. I just bought this because I knew that I could make this work in any any number of situations. So, yeah, this will work pretty well. A few notes on assembling this. Um, I'm using some uh, thread sealer. I actually use this for my head bolts, but this stuff is good for gas. Uh, it, it's just regular old PTFE sealer. Um, uh, it works. It works real well. It's better than. Uh, better than Teflon tape for, for fluids. So put a little bit of this on there, and I mean a little bit because these are eighth inch NPT in this particular case. Um, I also uh, have my uh, aluminum jaws in here. These are for doing um, AN fittings. It keeps from scarring the, anod the anodization on here. Um, so I just wanted to put a few notes on that. That's, that's a good thread sealer to use, and if you don't want to mess up your fittings you know use these jaws uh, so the next thing is i uh after i put my uh my coupling on here my male to male i'm going to put uh the elbow on here i'll get it lined up the way that i want the gauge is going to be on this side the uh, uh fuel injection units on this side so i'll have this lined up this way and then of course uh i'll put the uh, pressure transducer uh here here it is installed. Uh, so I've got my analog gauge because I would like to leave this here. It's good for under the hood stuff. Uh, pressure transducers installed here. It's a little hard to tell, but uh, yeah, there's plenty of clearance to get the plug in here. I actually checked it. Um, so it's not interfering with the regulator or anything like that. Um, I think that that looks pretty clean that way. Um, you could install this any number of ways. You know, I, I could have put it back here. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that drill and tap these. I, I've talked about that before. I don't like doing that. I like buying the proper fittings, you know, so this has got all the right fittings in here and, uh, it's, I've used the proper thread sealer. Um, so this is going to work out real well. So the next thing that we're going to do is, uh, I'm gonna come over here. I have, uh, my gauge set up already. Um, I didn't really show this part cause it's kind of tedious, but, uh, I've got a gauge cup. Um, this is the electronic gauge. I've made a little harness for it. You know, I like this nylon braided stuff. Um, so uh, it, it came with the harness sort of pre-made. I had to extend the leads for the uh, light that's inside, you know, for the, the uh, indicator light, or the dash light. Um, and uh, you know, it came with the grommet, but uh, because where I'm going to mount this, and I'll show that in just a second, um, where I'm going to mount this, this is going to be visible, so I wanted this to be nice and clean. Um, I've kind of run out of places for gauges, so uh, in my particular setup, I've got uh, my sport comp gauges here already. Um, I have trans temperature down here, and I think what I kind of fin finally uh, settled on here I'm going to move this over and uh, I'll put the fuel pressure gauge. Actually, I'm going to move this to this side because that's where this grommet's at right here. See, I already did this one this way. It's a little hard to see. It's dark in here, but uh, um, you can see that I have the same material here. I pulled the wiring down underneath into my console shifter that I have here. Um, so I'll just do the same thing with this. I'll just put the gauge there and there'll be two gauges next to each other i'll just shift this guy over so uh, that's totally optional that has nothing really to do with this really the topic of this is just putting in a uh, electronic fuel pressure gauge and um, there's a number of them out there there's digital ones different styles i prefer the auto meter gauges they're very high quality they're not the cheapest thing in the world but they're just you know they're good stuff uh, and I want to keep all of my stuff matching. You, you could put it any number of places if you, wherever you choose. Um, but the point is that it's electronic and, uh, and you, it's visible within the cab of your vehicle or the cabin. Um, so uh, that'll be the next part that I'm going to work on. So I'll show that piece of it and I'll show how I get the, uh, the plug for the end of it. I'm going to, I'm going to make a loom out of it. 
to make it real nice and clean and, and just look like it's supposed to. So uh, we'll show that next. Well, that was a bitch. Working under a dash is never fun. We're in a console that's very cramped like this where it really wasn't meant to have any of this stuff in here. But I have my gear vendors lights in here and the switch for the gear vendors and my trans temp gauge is already there and I got the fuel pressures. It's a wiring mess under there and I don't like wiring messes because I do nice wiring work. So anyways, enough of that rant. Um, so I, the last thing I have left to do here is to put uh, the wiring harness in for uh, the pressure switch. So I pulled it up through the carpet already and uh, I'm going to put a grommet, put a hole in the firewall and put a grommet in. So that'll be the last part of this. But this is... Uh, this is what it looks like installed. Install is complete. Um, so I was able to actually use where there used to be vacuum lines and stuff for the old air conditioning. This this has vintage air in it now, so I had a little leftover space to add a small wiring harness, which is uh, installed through the grommet there. Uh, I use that nylon braid. I really like this stuff. The only kind of bummer about it is um, I'm kind of anal about the way I do these, and I usually like to put a little bit of uh, heat shrink on the end. But these, the connector for this is pre-made. I didn't want to de-pin it because um, I don't necessarily have the right tool to do it. Um, it seems to be sitting in here just fine, though. So I just I singe the end so it doesn't unravel. Uh, but I usually, like I said, I put uh, a little bit of heat shrink on the end of those. So if you want to do that, that's kind of optional. Um, so it just sits right in here. It's pretty simple, right? It's three wires that go to this because it's a it's a pressure transducer. It's analog, so um, uh, that's why it has three wires going to it. Uh, so that's kind of what it looks like. So your options are totally variable here. You know, you could install this pressure transducer any which way you want. I just found that this takeoff fitting was probably the easiest thing to do. I liked keeping it on this side. Things are a little bit more complicated on the driver's side. Uh, with the linkage for the uh, accelerator linkage and uh, the, fil the filters over there, you know, just what's most important is that you make sure you're taking your pressure at the furthest point possible because it's going to show you your pressure drop and it's going to show you uh, what your pressure is after your filter. Um, so that's the, that's the preferred way to do that. Don't take the pressure off where the pump is at or before the filter because then you won't know if there's a problem after the filter. Uh, so uh, that's what it ended up looking like under here. And we're going to uh, turn the key on and just check and make sure we're getting feedback uh, and that the pressure is correct or what I, should, what I expect it to be. This is a 600 unit. It's a 30002. So the pressure is going to be 58 PSI. And I, I've talked about that before. There's always confusion on that. Um, the 400 horsepower units are 43 PSI. The Mean Street 800, because of the number of injectors it has in it, is 58, or excuse me, 43 PSI, because it has eight injectors. Um, all the other units are 58. Um, so that's just to clarify that once again, because it seems to come up very often. So let's uh, try this out for the first time and take a look and see what we get here. Uh, so I'm going to put the accelerator down to the floor because... I don't want it to prime shot. Talked about that before as well. I think it's 50% or more accelerator to the floor. Uh, you won't uh, trigger the prime shot because I don't plan on starting it right now. So I just want to see what the fuel pressure looks like on prime. So uh, here we go. So there we go. And that looks pretty much spot on to me there. It uh, And now it's because the pump turned off. That looked like it was just before 60. So and you can see it's bleeding off so it's slowly slowly bleeding down and through the return line as the as the pump is off so uh as a matter of fact let's try that again i'll turn the key off wait for the iac to close and open again and uh screen should go blank there it is all right pedal to the floor key on there she is So now I have a uh, fuel pressure here inside the cabin. Uh, this is an excellent troubleshooting tool. Um, 
I've talked about this before as well, and I'm going to say it again because anybody that hasn't watched the video that I've done on this, the, the Phytech unit does not know what your fuel pressure is. It's closed loop is really, ba it's based on the sensors that it has. So you've got uh, AFR and you've got TPS and you've got MAP, um, coolant temperature. Um, those are your kind of basic, you know, sensors that it's got. It doesn't know what the fuel pressure is. So if you have a sudden loss of fuel pressure, which happens, bad fuel pump, uh, the system doesn't know that that's the problem. So it's just going to try and compensate. Um, likewise, if the pressure is over, like if your fuel pressure regulator is loused up for some reason and it's clogged and it's, you know, you're running at 90 PSI, the system's going to keep trying to compensate because the pressure's so much higher, it's going to be running a whole lot richer. Uh, you know, vice versa, if your pressure's too low, it's going to be lean and it's going to keep increasing the duty cycle of the injectors to try and compensate and it'll run like shit and everybody runs into this problem at one point or another i think I've, i see it continuously on the the facebook forums uh, it's running really lean it's running really rich well a lot of times the fuel pressure regulators blown out they do go out um so you know knowing that your fuel pressure is what it's supposed to be is probably the first thing in troubleshooting so once you know that your fuel pressure is where it's supposed to be then run a log on it and take a look and see what's going on um because you could have a stuck injector and still have the right fuel pressure. You could have an injector that's clogged. Uh, there could, there's a number of other things that are kind of typical with these. Um, but, you know, having this and knowing what it is, a lot of guys install them under the hood like I had. And, you know, that works real well at idle, but you have no idea what it's doing while you're driving. So this is, this is a, a really important thing to have. This gauge actually does do data logging, and it's got a pinout. Uh, on the connector in the back. It's actually a digital gauge with it with an analog stepper motor in it. Um, uh, you know, and I've said that before in here too, don't run a fuel line inside your vehicle. <laughs> you do it electronically, put a sending unit in like the pressure transducer this has. Um, so it is, like I said, it is digital and it will do data logging if I want it to. Um, I haven't looked exactly how to do that, but I know the instructions mention something about it. So you, you could potentially get more information out of it if you're not paying attention to it real time but a lot of times fuel pressure problems are kind of constant so it should be real obvious if your if your fuel pressure isn't maintaining what it's supposed to be um, so anyways this is uh just you know uh, an okay video i guess about installing the fuel pressure uh, gauge it's, it's too difficult to kind of show the under the dash and the wiring and um, all that uh, you know, I wanted to try and video that, but it's impossible. Anybody that's ever worked on a vehicle and stuck their head under a dash before knows the last thing they want to do is try and hold a camera while you're doing it. Um, it, it just has real basic things, though. It's got a light, a pilot light inside of it for, for your dash lights, um, for your ear instrument lights. I happen to have the wiring for all that in here already because I had my trans temp here already. So I just tied that in there. You need a hot and a ground for this fused. I already had it properly fused for this gauge already um so i was able to just tag this tack this on there um and then uh it has the plug for the sending unit that's it it's uh, pretty easy to install um you know not intimidating at all it's just kind of a pain in the ass because you know working on inside a vehicle is never fun so uh, a fuel pressure gauge install on a phytech unit